Following 2017's South Park The Fratchet But Hole comes a brand new game in the world, but it looks a bit different. But did it need longer time to thaw out? Let's find out. Hi everyone, my name is Warwick and welcome to another review video, I hope you're doing well. We are here today talking about South Park Snow Day. This is a brand new game, seven years since the last one, which was in 2017. Fresh About Holt, which was a sequel to the 2014 South Park The Stick of Truth. And you may notice already, or you've seen things in websites or articles, where there's been a big departure to the style, where it's gone from 2D or 2.5D, I think they call it, to fully 3D rendered. And with that, a brand new style of gaming and a lot of different things as well. So I'm going to talk about it, sort of show you a bit about the game, what I interacted with, what I liked, what I disliked, and give you my thoughts and opinions. But before we start, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, give it a subscribe as well. The channel will really help it. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs and hopefully we'll get there. And uh, yeah, check out my other reviews as well. I've got some really cool ones and hopefully some more coming in the future as well. Anyway, this is South Park Snow Day, where you will notice a big departure from the general style from the show and from previous games where it's gone into 3D. This isn't the first time going to 3D. There was a game for the N64, which is just called South Park, which is like a first person shooter. I'm not completely against the style of the game, but I know for a lot of people, this will be a big departure because again the show and the two previous games are based in the 2d space and is very faithful to the game but yeah so this is south park snow day which is a brand new action adventure multiplayer game which is playable with up to three friends or ally bots for the very first time so like i said with the original south park and 64 you could play against the players but this is the first thing you actually team up with others which i think is pretty cool but how the game is you're better than your way through snow covered town of south park this new all 3d co-op game it is a blizzard of epic proportions that have blanketed the town of south park as up to Cartman, Stan, Kenny, Kyle, and you, the new kid, to save the town from an endless winter. You get equipment, you get upgrades, devastating melee and range attacks. You can deploy special abilities that will bring hordes of enemies and epic bosses to their knees. Also, there's a wide range of cosmetics. Customize you, the new kid, with endless combinations from beanies to cheesy puff t-shirts to chin balls. So that's South Park Snow Day, basically a quick synopsis of the game that we're about to check out to give you a bit of an idea of what's going on. I like to talk about settings and accessibility, especially in these review videos. I think it's good to check them out because a lot of people out there who may like a particular game or start a game but not able to play it for accessibility reasons. So it's always good to check these out so people get fully informed. It's like, okay, they've got these options. It means I can able to experience the games. But I strongly, strongly believe that all games should be accessible to as many people as they can. And accessibility makes that happen. You know, a lot of people aren't able to play games for certain reasons. So having accessibility to adapt that to how they can play it can only be a good thing. Everyone can play the game their own way. Someone playing a game really hard by someone having accessibility options, it just allows games to be played by more people. And that's what we want. We want everyone to enjoy this wonderful medium. With South Park Snow Day, accessibility isn't the best. It's there, but it's bare minimum. So you've got subtitles, which you can turn off and on. You can change the size, which you don't always see changing the size, so that's good. And there's actually a few options for that. And it actually shows you an example, which is good to see. And you've got subtitle background as well. You got visuals, you've got color blindness, the mode, and then you can change the floating health bars. And then you've also got a auto escape grapple. So when you've got grappled, you have to like spam button where this one allows you to auto escape. And that's it. Very basic. I'm glad what there is there, which is you know better than nothing, absolutely. But I would like to see more. This might sound controversial because the type of game it is, but maybe changes to like the language or stuff like in the game like i know that's not what south park is about south park is very crude at points like maybe having an option where you could have it minimal swearing or then excessive have it that way as well so if you want more of that stuff then have that option as well. so after we check that out we start the game and to my surprise you actually start with basically a pretty much like an episode like this is the actual episode this is made for the game it's like a good what i think about five or six minutes or so like a cutscene basically establishing what's going on there's a massive blizzard in south park and cartman's trying to find out if school's gonna be closed doesn't matter what anything else is happening it's like is the school gonna close we find out it is and basically it's claimed to be a school day in the name of the game obviously cartman gets changed i will say nice little callback he gets his little wizard outfit which was from a stick of truth which is really cool to see 
So it was a nice little touch to it. And if you watch this cutscene, Cartman comes out, and this is when it establishes itself into its new world, its new environment for this particular game. I will say, I'm actually very impressed. I'm never a, a fan of animation games going into like 3D spaces. Like sometimes it works, but a lot of time it doesn't. And it does look very like almost uncanny or just looks really off. But to see this, actually, I think they've done a pretty good job. It looks pretty clean. And I think within a few minutes, the transition, it transitions right around. And then we get into you, the new kid. So the new kid is sort of like established character in South Park. And you're the new kid again. And this is your character creation. So you've actually got quite a lot of options available to you. You can sort of change things around. So you've got like outfits, you've got hats, you have hair. You've got other accessories on your face, capes as well. You can change different eyes and those like facial features. So you can have a beard or like scars and stuff. I decided to make a beard. I will say you can't change the color separately from from hair or facial hair. If you change, have color for your hair, it has to be with a beard as well. So I went with my classic look, which is ginger hair and glasses and a beard. <laughs> and then you also got quite a few emotes available to you. You can sort of see which ones do and you put it on your wheel. Makes them use throughout the game. They don't give you any extra stuff. It's just almost like a taunt, similar to like other games like Fortnite where you can just do a bit of a dance. So you make your character, you made your new kid and you're always known as new kid and this is where you start with a tutorial you've got Carmen basically talking to you and explaining things and you go through the game learning about the mechanics of this game you know standard stuff moving around using the camera using weapons learning about the currency of the game so there are loot roll because there's a big shortage and we're trying to find loot roll so loot roll is actually worth more than money so you destroy either enemies or breakable environment areas around you to get that stuff then you can trade to get abilities and cards and stuff from the other npcs within the game you can basically get different cards which give you special abilities within the game and you get rare ones you've got common uncommon rare and then i think legendary and obviously they do different things depending on what you want them to do you can upgrade them as well with obviously if you've got any tp as they call it. And then you start learning about battling. So you, you got these like children elves who are dressed up and you got to battle them and you sort of live in techniques. So you got your main sort of smash jumping. You got like sort of fart ability. So that's one of the special cars that I got that if I fart, I can sort of hit them a radius. You got these different weapons, range attacks as well that you can use, which is pretty cool. So you learn a lot in the tutorial and you also get established about the story and stuff. And then once you get through all that, learning about that, you start the game proper. So we are with Cartman and figuring out that actually there are other factions within who want to take over. So we need to fight them. He established this and this is where the main game starts and also where you are at your base, Cooper Keep. And this is where you learn other things. Check out your perks so you can upgrade your perks depending on what you want. Get like things through doing missions and stuff where you're able to upgrade them. And there's a various different things there. Cosmetics you can upgrade, you can upgrade armor there's like a little boutique which you can change more outfits and with coins and stuff you can buy more stuff i think i bought different glasses to suit my own ones <laughs> learn a bit more about the cars there's like a little booklet and there's a little different abilities so you've got your abilities but also enemies cards as well and what they've got what they can use you know it's a good hub to sort of learn about what's going on and then you find out that you are fighting and you get to pick which cards you would like to use in battle you see what cards they want to use in battle, and then you start. It's been tied to like a roguelike game where you do certain like levels to then get to like the end boss. So it's like a scaling system where you start. But if you're enemies, you clear the area, go to the next part, clear the area, and so on. A big, big focus with this, I'm not sure you've noticed throughout me talking, is the focus on multiplayer. So this is the first multiplayer co-op South Park game. Like I said, there was a multiplayer game in late 90s, but that was play versus play, where this is cooperative with players. There are options to play this solo offline, which is good. You do get AI bots with you. So you can see there are numbers like two, three, and four. They are the AI bots who will come in periodically to help you when you're battling. But it is encouraged to play this multiplayer with friends. I wasn't able to do that, unfortunately. At the time when I checked it out, the servers weren't up at the moment, so I wasn't able to test it with anyone else. But it did work while playing offline with AI. You know, AI was there helping out. I know some sort of live service type games where you have to play it online. This is available offline. You can play it single player or even like just do duos but you have to have four people in a, in a team so if there's anyone missing like as a player ai will fill that in and yeah that's it and then you sort of go through a battle and you find out what's going on you find a bit more law you do a lot of things like, oh i noticed that area i know that bit and stuff and you sort of see little hints and tips maybe from the previous games or shows you meet other characters throughout it which i'm not going to fully spoil here and that's basically south park snow day 
And honestly, the game's average. I will commend it in its art style. Initially, I was a bit hesitant with the 3D aspect because I really liked the design of the show because it's got a unique style. And with the two games was Fractured But Whole and Stick of Truth. I thought those styles were really good and really worked well. So going to a 3D environment was a bit concerning, but I think they actually did a very good job considering it is in 3D and it does look like the characters and they've built a great world, so I will give them that. However, it just feels like the battling system, as much as it seems like I put a lot in, it's just not that interesting. 95% of the time, you just go into an area, kill the same enemies, done, and repeat. And for some people, that might be great. You know, people might enjoy that, and I know there are some bits in this game where it breaks it up a little bit but i did one of the campaign missions and it felt i've done it already there may be more out there but i feel like i've experienced pretty much everything the game has so far and it's just going to repeat it. it's going to be like oh okay to go to a slightly different area defeat the enemies move on and repeat i will say because i didn't play it as multiplayer and maybe lo losing out on a bit of the appeal of it because it is very much encouraged that while it can be played single player offline it's very much encouraged to play it online with that though as of recording this there was no cross play which i feel like honestly that does not encourage me multiplayer games like this they live or die on cross play i believe because a lot of people mainly have one console i know for a fact my friends not all of us have same console one of us may have one some have couple but everyone doesn't have the same console so having it not cross play could really hurt it with longevity of the game because how many people are going to play it on switch how many people are going to play it on xbox how many pc how many people are going to play it on playstation 5 you know what if you get the game playstation 5 and your friends got xbox you can't play with each other so it's hindered with that all i know is as far as i know from this recording there's no cross play Maybe they'll bring it back in the future. There were talks about there was a lot of features that they wanted to bring in the game, but they had to scale back dues for money and time. Maybe they'll bring that back in the future. But yeah, just even with that, I feel like even if I did play with friends, I feel like we would have just had a bit of a laugh and then, okay, cool. All right, that, that was it. And then just repeat. Enjoy the nods to like previous shows or, or just elements in the game. You feel like you're in the world, which is great to see. You've got characters you're interacting with. But it just it just didn't really do anything for me. It's just, again, it was just like, generally you felt bored at times. It was just smashing things, saying things. The noises of the NPCs you're attacking got old very quickly. I don't know, you can, you can change that unless you just change the whole audio down. After a few times, yeah, it's quite funny. But after a while, it's just, okay, I'm hearing the same thing over and over. And the same with cards and stuff. Yeah, it's funny the first few times when we keep hearing it. It's like, okay. That's fine. I can hear it now. Like, there doesn't seem to be any way to skip it or mute that part of it. And it just, it did seem to get old quite quickly. Again, it was fine. You know, it handled well. It looked good. I'm a bit confused that it hasn't been released on PS4 or previous generation Xbox, but it's on Switch, PS5, Xbox, XS, and PC, but not in the previous generations, which is a bit weird because I feel like this type of game would have worked on PS4 and the previous xbox if it's on switch then i'm guessing it should work on there but like i said you know it was fine because it handled well just i don't know just i it something just didn't gel with me i enjoyed the show i've not watched it for but i enjoyed the show i enjoyed previous south park games there wasn't enough variety i think the snow while it's cool and obviously i understand the aesthetics of the game called snow day that's the whole point of it it did seem a lot samey and it was just fighting the same enemies over and over there was, didn't seem much variety even with like one of the bosses there was some variety but again it was just Get to the enemy, smash, 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 heal, smash, 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 done. All right, let's move on. And just, I didn't feel very much interested in the story. I didn't feel very engaged in it very much. And there was points where some like levels were just seemed too open. It was just like a lot of wandering around, almost like a walking simulator. I feel like if you're a big fan of South Park, you will get a lot of drama in this game. Because again, like I said, it handles well. It looks good for what it is. I think they've done a great job. I think you'll get a lot of the humor. And I think you'll really enjoy that element. And if you have friends on the same console who really enjoy South Park, I think you can have a good time with this. Outside of that, I think there's better games out there similar to this. They've touted it as like a roguelike game. And there's a lot of roguelike games out there which I think are worth people's time more than maybe this game. If you're not invested in the South Park lore, and stories or, or the show like i said it's average i can't really knock it too much i think what they've done is adequate but i definitely think especially with stick of truth and the fracture but whole they've peaked with those games and the sort of this one or hits worse because of those games because you know they are south park licenses but they felt like actual good game in there and great mechanics especially rpg and sort of turn-based stuff where this, it feels like, oh, it's just a bog-standard, roguelike, multiplayer, beat-em-up action game with South Park skin over it. But that's my thoughts. So thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. 
Like I said, if you're a big fan of South Park, I think you can get a good laugh with this. Just make sure all your friends are on the same console. I play this on PlayStation 5. If you want to play it, make sure you got your friends on the same console. Let me know what you think down below. If you checked it out, if you haven't, what are your thoughts? Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm right. If you enjoyed it, if you are, fantastic. That's the thing with reviews and games and stuff. Not everyone's going to love every single game. There's a lot of variety out there. And people will like some games, people may not love other games. So it's always good to keep it open mind. And again, hopefully this review will some way help in making decisions for you. If not, then I haven't done my job properly. But if I have, let me know. But anyway, I stream on Twitch and YouTube. And I'm a lot of places. I'm doing a lot of content. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. We'll see you soon. And um, take care. Bye-bye.